everybody. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Um, let's start with the core practice. Find a comfortable spot to sit. Close your eyes and take deep breaths. Very nice. So today, I am grateful for sunshine. I know we haven't had a whole lot of it lately, but when the sun comes up, I always feel better. So I like to get out there and feel the sun. So that's what I'm grateful for today. We're going to read the first half of the next chapter, We're almost toward the end of the book. So uh, we left off where they were shopping for the wedding. They went and ordered some dresses. So they will have to see if those get in on time. And they also went and got some flowers and they got some ice cream. But chapter eight is called The Families Get Together. Life at the Quimby home soon became busy and confused. Mr. Quimby now went to work regularly every morning. But Aunt B, to save paying a whole month's rent on an apartment she would leave before the end of the month, had moved in with the Quimbys. She stored most of her belongings in the Quimby's basement and the rest she piled in Ramona's room to be packed for shipment to Alaska. Ramona slept on the floor in Beezus' room in the sleeping bag Beezus had taken to camp one summer. The telephone rang constantly, neighbors offering to help with the wedding, people inquiring about Aunt Bee's little sports car that she had advertised for sale, friends returning calls to say yes, they would be delighted to attend the wedding. Here they are, all busy inside the house. Teachers at Aunt B's school gave her a bridal shower. Most of the gifts were flat and easy to pack. Bath towels, cheese boards, placemats. Aunt B's class gave her a coffee maker. Boxes piled up in Ramona's room. Willa Jean's old bassinet was moved into the Quimby's house and placed in the parents' bedroom. Neighbors gave Mrs. Quimby a baby shower, which meant more boxes. Beezus and Ramona hoped Elgie would stay where he belonged until after the wedding. Their mother seemed to grow larger every day, or perhaps the maternity clothes she was wearing made her look bigger than she really was. Wedding presents, mostly sets of bath towels, began to arrive. Ramona had never seen such beautiful towels, big, thick, fluffy, and in soft, pretty colors. She stroked them, laid her cheek against them, traced her fingers along the designs. They were truly towels to marry for. The Quimby's thin, faded towels had frayed edges. The afternoon before the wedding rehearsal, Grandpa Day was arriving by plane so he could practice giving the bride away. Aunt B, whose car had been sold, borrowed Uncle Hobart's van and with her nieces drove to the airport to meet her father. Grandpa Day seemed older and thinner than the girls had remembered. He hugged his granddaughters, said they had grown, and announced he wanted to stay in a motel. No couch in a living room for him with a bunch of women fussing around about a wedding. At my age, I need a little peace and quiet he informed his daughters. Leaving his carry-on bag at the nearest motel, Aunt B drove her father to the Quimby's, where more boxes had arrived, none of them containing the bridesmaids' dresses. You can count on it, said Grandpa Day. Something always goes wrong when there's a wedding. The sisters exchanged looks of anguish. Uncle Hobart walked over to the Quimby's to see the newest wedding presents, loot, he called them, and to pick up his van, which he was about to trade in on a four-wheel drive truck for Alaska. A snowplow would be attached to the front. Mrs. Quimby looked tired and very big around the middle, was preparing a huge toss salad because the two families were getting together before the rehearsal. Jesus was buttering stacks of French bread. Mr. Quimby arrived home late from work because a checker at the market had caught a shoplifter. The police had to be called and questions answered. Even Aunt B looked tired. When Uncle Hobart returned, desperate Jesus whispered to him that the bridesmaids' dresses had not been delivered. We'll see about that, he said and called the shop, which promised the dresses first thing in the morning. This evening, you will deliver those dresses this evening, ordered Uncle Hobart, as if he were speaking to a crew in the oil fields. The Kemps arrived with two casseroles and dessert. Because the dining room was too small to seat so many people, the food was set up on the dining room table. Everyone picked up a plate and helped himself. 
Ramona was happy that she no longer was no longer responsible for Willie Jean, who had trouble serving herself and was helped by her grandmother. When everyone was seated in the living room enjoying chicken with noodles, a casserole of mixed vegetables, and salad, Aunt B, sitting on the floor beside Uncle Hobart, asked, What kind of flowers did you order for the church and reception hall? Uncle Hobart dropped his fork and slapped his forehead with his palm. Flowers for the church! I completely forgot! <gasps> Hobart, you didn't! I had them on the list! Aunt B was not sure he meant what he said. Her groom was a great kidder. I did, confessed Uncle Hobart. We were all so busy eating ice cream cones. Oh, I'll call the florist the first thing in the morning. We're going to stop there. So we'll have to read tomorrow to find out if they get the flowers in time for the wedding. I don't know. I hope you guys have a good afternoon, and I will probably see you back here tomorrow for another video.